Today, we're going to be looking at a brand new service called Gotham.io. It's targeted specifically at Go.Developers, and it allows users to upload their Go.Games games and play them online and share them with other people within seconds. But before we get started with today's video, I want you to head on down to the comment section below and let me know what you're currently working on. What's the project that you've got going on right now? Perhaps you're just getting started working on your first game or maybe you're months into your dream project. Whatever it might be, head on down to that comment section and let me know what it is because I'm super, super keen to hear what you guys have got going on. Also, while you're there, if you're not currently subscribed to this channel, please click on that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Once you're done with that, come on back up and we'll get started with today's video. So as I said in the intro, we're going to be looking at a service today called gotem.io or gotm.io and it promises to be an itch.io like service dedicated and targeted towards go.developers specifically. And when I say that, I really mean it. This service is going to create optimized Godot builds for your game and allow you to play them in your browser within seconds and share them with your friends. It looks like a fantastic service and I'm really excited to show you all how it works. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to fire up my browser and you might notice here that I am using uh, Internet Explorer's successor. Um, Microsoft Edge or the new Microsoft Edge as they're calling it now. Please don't judge me. I have literally just installed it before this video um, just to try it out. I've been hearing some good things about it. I've heard that it's basically uh, a better version of Chrome. Uh, I'm a bit skeptical, but anyway, I'm going to give it a try and uh, I can always go back to Firefox if I don't like it. So with that being said, let's click on gotm.io here. I just have it in my favorites. And you can see that its presentation here is very similar to itch.io, a kind of rival service for indie developers to upload their games as an alternative to the likes of the Steam Store or the Unreal Store. And I just want to give you a bit of an overview of what this service actually is. So if we come over to the right hand side here and just click on my little profile icon, we can come down to the about section and you can see here that we get the sort of sales marketing page for gotten.io. You can see it says hosting go.games has never been easier. Instantly play great free games on any device so we can play or upload a game straight away. You can see here we've got quick setup, fast loading, instant play, and best of all, it's completely free to play and upload games. It says that it's perfect for game jams. You can basically just create your game and drag and drop, upload it, and then you can share it straight away, which is really useful for game jams. And one of the interesting things I found out about this is that it provides multiplayer functionality out of the box. So it will basically um, take your multiplayer code within Godot and it will create all of the um, networks for you within the Gotham service. At least that's how I understand it. I haven't tested it out yet, but that's how it sounds. If we click on the multiplayer button here, you can see that we get the multiplayer documentation and it has all of the documentation here for how to get started with multiplayer on Gotham uh, and how you would add that into your Godot game. So it's using the network multiplayer ENet and the packet peer UDP and so on and so forth. Uh, but you can have a read all about that. I'll leave the link to all of this documentation in the description for you guys to have a look at. If we just come back to the about page here, you can see that there is a custom GD script plugin, which gives you access to the Gotham IOs APIs. And the really interesting one here is the optimization. So not only will you be able to upload your go.games straight to gotten.io and just have it work in the browser out of the box, it will also optimize your game specifically um, for working on this platform. So the auto compression is a big one. I tried something a little bit earlier on and it basically less than halved the size of my packet file, um, which was really impressive. So I will show you that uh, a little bit later on. And you can see here it says continually updated with cool new features and we have a bit of a roadmap here. So let's just open the roadmap. You can see that there are some things uh, here such as rating systems, game cards, search by tags, etc. And we'll come back to this roadmap in a little while. And if I scroll down, you can see that again, no ads or microtransactions. You make fun games and Gotten does the rest. So this service is completely free. There aren't any ads or microtransactions on the platform whatsoever. However, I am aware that they are potentially looking to incorporate ways for developers to actually earn money through this system. However, as it stands right now, it's not clear how that's going to be done, but I am aware that that is potentially in the pipeline. Whether or not that means ads and microtransactions will be brought to the platform in the future, I'm not entirely sure yet, but time will tell. 
So let's scroll down a little bit further and you can see that we have these premium studio features. So monthly billing for premium features depending on usage. Uh, I don't believe that this is uh, available right now. I think this is, yeah, it just says this is an outline of the planned business model. So this is potentially how they might make their money. And it looks like they're planning to take a cut of tips and merchandise, basically. So um, going back up to the no ads or microtransactions, it sounds like that might actually be the case going forward. And they're planning to make their money based on tips that players will give to developers um, when they're playing their game. And also it looks like they'll be offering some premium features for developers um, to incorporate into their games. So examples here are cosmetic settings. Okay, so let's scroll up and go back up to the roadmap here. And you can see that we have quite a lot of things in this roadmap and some of them are really, really interesting to me. So for example, we have things like payouts and remote play together, which sounds really interesting. I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be sort of like a PlayStation share ability where you can um, play a single player game together with somebody else across the internet. If that's the case, that sounds really cool. Um, video sharing and leaderboards, again, all sound really, really cool. However, I um, because I was contacted by the creator of this service, I have been able to press him for uh, a little bit more information than what's given on the roadmap here. And he's offered me a few little exciting tidbits of information for things that aren't actually on this roadmap. So we have um, game save sharing, which sounds like a really cool thing. So if your game supports um, save files, it sounds like you're going to be able to somehow do some form of cloud save um, sharing in that. Again, this is all speculation based on the very small amount of information I got from the creator on this. Uh, we have go to optimize interactive streaming. Now, whether or not that means that they're going to compete with the likes of Twitch specifically for Godot games, I don't know. Um, but Godot Optimized Interactive Streaming is on the list. Text and voice chat for users. So again, I'm assuming that um, we'll have some form of communication with other people that are playing the same game as you. And the one that's really interesting to me and, and really stands out is user-generated content uploads. Now, again, I don't have any further information on what that exactly means. However, I'm imagining a sort of Steam workshop sort of thing here when it says user-generated content uploads. Uh, yeah, so maybe it's maybe user-generated models um, to input into your game or levels or so on and so forth. Um, yeah, I don't know, um, but again, sounds really exciting. Another thing um, is achievements as well. So achievements, everyone likes chasing achievements in games. If we can have a built-in system in gotten.io to provide an achievement system. Um, maybe they apply badges to your to your account. Um, again, that all sounds really, really exciting. So enough of the talking about this service and what it is. I wanna show you how it works because it's really, really stupidly simple um, and I'm actually really enjoying playing around with it. So in order to create a new game, we come up to the right-hand side here. So once you've signed in, uh, you come up to the right-hand side where your profile is and you click on developer dashboard. Now here it'll ask you to create a studio. Um, if you're a one man uh, band, then that's absolutely fine. Just press create a studio, just give it your own name. I've just done it here and called it Code with Tom. So this gives me our own URL. Um, so it's gotten.io slash code with Tom. If you want to go and see any of the projects that I upload here, you can see here that we just get this little um, banner that says this is currently in beta. So any feedback, just get in touch over the Twitter or the Discord, or you can email him. Uh, let's press continue on that. And then you can see we're presented with this um, dashboard. So I can imagine this is gonna be really handy in the future. Once I've got a few games up on here, I'll be able to see how much revenue I've made once the revenue systems are in place. I'll be able to see how many players on average I get over a course of time, how many new players I get, the bounce rate, all of this sort of information that you would expect to get from a service such as itch.io or Steam, it looks like you're going to get all of that here. Obviously, I can't see anything right now because I don't have anything uploaded um, except for this test that I did just before this video. But again, just done that this second, so nobody's played it yet. Um, but yeah, so you've got a really good analytics section here. You've got a studio page here where you can edit your icon and give it a bit of a description about um, what it is you're doing. And then the advanced section is just for things like what you want your URL to be and who can have admin access to this and any financial stuff, which is not available right now, but is coming soon. Okay, so uh, I said we were gonna upload a game. So let's do that now. Let's click on new game and we need to give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this one open FPS. I'll just call it open FPS two because I've already created one up there called the same thing. Once we've created that, you'll see we get a title for the game. 
we can give it a thumbnail and we can select the target platform. So I'm just going to say desktop. Um, if you've got controls available for tablet and mobile, then obviously you could choose that as well. And now it wants your game pack file. So if we just quickly open uh, Godot here, and I'm just going to open one of my projects. To get a pack file, you need to come up to Project, Export, and you'll need to have uh, a preset available. If you don't have that, you can press Add, and you can choose one of these, and it'll prompt you to download the appropriate files. I've just got a Windows desktop preset available here, and you can see I've set my export path to .export slash build.exe. Um, I'm going to click on this, but I'm actually not going to export it to the exe. Instead, I'm going to click on this export pck slash zip. Let's click on that. I'm going to go to my export file here, and I'm going to call it build.pck. You can see I've already got one there, so let's save that and overwrite it. That was it. That's basically exported a pck file. If I come to my file browser here, just drag this across, you can see I've got this build.pck file. It's 651 kilobytes. Let's come over to this and let's open that there. In fact, let's just drag and drop it in like that. And you can see now that it's compressing and uploading. So it gives you a nice little breakdown of what is in your game. So you can see I've got 0.4 megabytes of textures and 0.3 megabytes of other files. And you can see this is the compression I was talking about before. It's actually compressed that down um, to 0.2 megabytes, so 200 kilobytes. It's achieved a 68.5% compression. Now, on larger games, I don't know how this is going to scale, whether or not games that are a gigabyte in size are going to scale down to 500 meg. I don't really know. Um, but that, for me, is, is great because in a browser set in, in particular, um, the smaller the file size, the better, as far as I'm concerned. So we have that PCK file uploaded now. I'm going to press Publish Changes. I'm not going to make it public right now. Um, we're just going to leave it as private. And then we're going to click on this View Publish button here. This will take us to the page. And straight away, I've hit an issue with uh, Internet Explorer or the new Microsoft Edge. It says that this doesn't support uh, GLES 3. So I'm going to go back to Firefox and we'll see you in a second. OK, so we're back in Firefox and I've got the URL open here. Not a great start for Microsoft Edge, I must say. And um, we're just waiting for the game to load here. You can see it's just uh, it's got a loading spinner. So the game has loaded in Firefox, thankfully. Um, so we'll just give this a second to load up. And what this will be doing, I assume, is unpacking that PCK file, loading it into the custom bespoke version of Godot that um, Gotham has available, and that will be uh, loading up that PCK file to run the game. Okay, and yep, this is it. Now, I didn't actually cut that video at all, and that was completely live, so it took a while. Um, however, we are now running with our game. You can see um, if I click into the game, it now says Gotham has control of my pointer, so it's recognized my input set mouse captured mode. Um, and that's all worked fine. All of my animations and assets are looking okay. I can move around with uh, my WASD keys. I can sprint and jump. Everything is working perfectly fine. My firing, recoil. Yeah, and uh, and that's the game uploaded. It's it's available on the web. Anyone can go to this URL now, providing I make it public, and they can play my game in the browser. As simple as that. I didn't have to uh, create a Mac OS export or a Linux export and a Windows export, and then start dishing those out on itch.io as downloads. Um, I could literally just fire this URL over to anyone with a, a desktop PC or a mobile if I had mobile controls available in this game, which I currently don't. Um, however, if I did, then I could just fire that URL out, out to anyone with any device and they'd be able to play it straight away, um, which I think is pretty amazing. Now, I know Godot has its own HTML export, um, but even with that, you would have to find a server to upload it to and upload it and make sure that it can run all of the files. Um, so this is just super, super simple. And I think this is fantastic. It also says that um, you can actually combine this with itch.io if you want. And you can basically um, create an embed and just embed this on your itch.io profile. So, um, you know, you could use this in tandem. You could use this as your upload for a HTML-based game and then uh, head on over to itch 
and promote it there and just embed it on your itch profile. So that was it for today's video. I just wanted to give you a really brief look at this um, upcoming project. I think it's got some huge potential for the Godot community and I'm really excited to see where this goes, especially with those features that were hinted at in the roadmap and also um, that I got a little bit of a sneak preview with. Um, I'm hoping that you guys feel the same. Let me know in the comments what you think about this service. Will you be giving this a try? Will you switch to this from itch.io? Or will you use it in tandem, perhaps by using that embed system that I talked about before? Um, let me know in the comments below. Again, if you aren't currently subscribed to this channel, please click on that subscribe button, hit the notification bell to make sure you get notified whenever I release a new video on this channel. And until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next video.